Approximately 6,400 firefighters are assigned to the Camp and Woolsey fires as of today, down from 9,000 earlier this week. The two fires now burned nearly 248,000 acres and have destroyed over 17,000 structures. But before we get into details on those fires, we wanted to show a quick clip that highlights the extreme fire behavior that firefighters were facing early on in these fires. In this case, the campfire in Butte County on Thursday morning. As you can see, this engine is from Nevada Yuba Placer Unit. Captain Jessen is trying to get his crew through this fire. We're talking a narrow lane, narrow two lane road uh, that hampered a lot of efforts. As you can see, fires on both sides of the road and embers continue to blow across. Keep in mind this fire came through this area several times. You had a lot of things, as you can see here, traffic due to cars, whether they ran out of gas or crashed at some times as well. They were just simply the folks got out and ran to safety the best they could. Again, you can see the, the, how it, the day basically turned to night. You can see the drops on John's windshield. That's from melting telephone lines as well. You can see just the difficulty of just trying to traverse those surface streets to get to those individuals to help. This was strictly a rescue situation all day Thursday. Every resource that arrived was put into the rescue mode. We sequestered hundreds of people at certain times just because they were trapped. They would be put into large parking lots of a church or a, t or a business of some sort just to get them away from the heat. You can see all the different types of traffic coming and going all at the same time. I believe this engine crew actually rescued four people right around this time frame at one point. And uh, because they were trapped as well due to a lot of cars in the way that had been left, a uh, Cal Fire bulldozer was in the area and walked in and actually pushed those vehicles out, out of the way so Captain Jessen could get his crew and the civilians they rescued out of harm's way. I'd like to move on to the current stats. Look at this, 356 new fires last week. These are fires you folks don't even hear about that were kept at 10 acres or less throughout the state of California. 2018, look at this. Again, our fire numbers have increased as far as amount of fires. Our uh, stats as far as acreage, again, have increased to 872,786 acres. Horrendous. 2017, with all the fires to date, and this is, of course, before December's fire siege of last year, we've only burned 316,774 acres. Uh, we're well over another record in total acres burned in the state of California. Well, probably more than well over than 1.7 million acres. The last record was set at 1.59 million acres back in 2008. So as you can see, and unfortunately this year is not over. So let's move on now to an update on the Camp and Woolsey fire. We'll start with the 151,000 acre campfire in Butte County. Keep in mind, that's not even a record acreage by any means. The Mendocino complex was at 459,000 acres earlier this year, another record. Firefighters have been making great progress, but despite some gusty winds and low humidity in the area over the weekends, uh, the firefighters have been able to increase that containment over and over and over again, and now have that campfire contained at 66% as of this morning's update. Sadly, the number of confirmed fatalities on the campfire has also increased by one yesterday and is now at 77 individuals. Search and rescue teams, along with fire service, are continuing to use specialized human and canine skills to assist the Butte County Sheriff in the search for additional missing victims. Some areas are beginning to have those evacuation orders lifted as well, and we want to stress the importance of returning to your home safely. I know you're all frustrated, but we want to make sure we do the job right, and we want to get you home to your properties so you can see what's taking place, but we need to provide for your safety. Remember, the danger isn't necessarily over once you return home either. 
I'll have some specific tips on returning home safely in just a few minutes. But first, an update on the other large fire, the Woolsey Fire down south in Ventura and LA counties. Firefighters again have made great progress on that fire as well since our last broadcast on Friday and now have the Woolsey Fire at 94% contained. Full containment is expected on the 22nd of this month. Many of the evacuated areas have been repopulated, however, portions of Malibu still remain under a mandatory evacuation. Firefighters continue to patrol the area and ex extinguish remaining hotspots, which will pop up continuously, as they continue to work diligently to get that fire to that 100% containment and get the remaining residents back in their homes. Now be aware that fire resources are not just going to leave once they have that 100% containment. They will be there several weeks to come doing patrols and further mop up. The weather this week so far has been much like we've been seeing the past few weeks with continued dry conditions. But we are forecast to see a couple of inches of rain in most areas of Northern California beginning tomorrow, actually tomorrow night and into Wednesday. And in Southern California a little later in the week. Now, while this isn't enough rain by any means to make a big difference or really a difference in our overall vegetation moisture, it's still a nice reprieve from the relentless dry conditions that we've been having to suffer all this year and last. However, remember that in areas that have seen significant fire activity recently, and I'll, you know, I'll refer you back to the Ventura County and Santa Barbara counties earlier this year, rain could mean mudslides and debris flow. If you live in an area that has seen recent wildfire activity, please stay very alert at all times during these rain events. I mentioned earlier that many residents are returning home or will be returning home very shortly, we hope. And we wanted to finish off the broadcast today with some tips on how to return home safely. Again, safely. When you return home, be aware and use extreme caution around trees, power poles, or any other tall objects that may have lost the stability during the fire. Stay clear of burned trees as they can be easily downed by uh, winds, upcoming winds, especially with this low coming in, you're gonna see some more winds. Do not touch any downed power lines and report them to your local utility company immediately. Also, look for any hidden embers throughout your property, on your rooftop especially, and especially in your gutters. You don't wanna have that fire reignite. Pay co close attention to areas like wood or debris piles and keep a close eye out for ash pits. Uh, we call them stump holes. This is where a stump is actually burned out by fire well into the ground. You step in it, your leg will go down. You could do, you get serious burns because of this. The ash is actually at ground level, so be careful where you tread. And make sure, again, of hidden embers, which can be hard to spot and can easily burn you. Turn off your power, use a, pa a battery powered flashlight to thoroughly inspect your home for damage up, down, all around. Also check for the smell of any gas around your home. Once you're sure it is safe to do so, turn the main power breaker back on. If you still don't have power, contact your utility company. Now also, if you have a propane, heating oil or a solar system, be sure to turn those off or disconnect them somehow until you can have them inspected for damage by a licensed technician before using them again. 